So, Rampage kicked off with Bobby Fish facing off against Jungle Boy, and in the end, Jungle Boy made Bobby Fish tap out with the snare trap submission. And I feel like I should say something about this, because Bobby Fish being a new guy, I feel like would get a really good start, but right now he's 4-4 four to four as far as win-losses go, which isn't awful, but I honestly just expected him to do better, just because he is such a really good wrestler, and he is a really hot new acquisition. But either way, afterwards, Adam Cole attacked Jungle Boy after the match, and they continued the story of Bobby Fish sort of working for the Super Click as a mercenary, and I already went into how I felt about all of that in my November 10th Dynamite review, so if you want to look at that, go ahead. But they were setting Jungle Boy up for the concerto, but Christian Cage and Luchasaurus saved him, and Cole abandoned Fish and let him get hit with a kill switch, which was kind of discouraging to me just because I said in my last review how I really thought that they were going to continue to set up for the Undisputed Era reunion within AEW, and I feel like this kind of puts a damper on it, you know, just Cole abandoned abandoning one of his former Undisputed Era members, but I guess it's also not the first time he's been shitty to his friends. And then the Super Click had a promo, but Hangman Adam Page interrupted them, and Adam stepped up to Adam, which really excited me because I really want to see this match at some point down the line. But the Young Bucks sent Cole on his way, and Adam Page basically apologized to his old friends, the Young Bucks, and said that they cost each other a shot at a championship, so they were even. And he also warned the Bucks that if they interfered on Saturday during the World Championship match at full gear, he would ruin them. And then Jade Cargill took on Santana Garrett. And no surprise, Jade continued her hot streak by beating Santana in a squash match when she hit her jaded finisher for the win. And then her manager, Mark Sterling, was going to celebrate with some cake, but Red Velvet threw the cake in his face. And then her and Jade began brawling, and eventually they had to be pulled apart. And then we had Dante Martin facing off against Araya Davari, and hey, check it out, another WWE cruiserweight that AEW nabbed up. I feel like I should say something about this now, just because we have seen guys like Araya Davari and Tony Nese show up on AEW television. But honestly, I don't know what else to say other than the fact that WWE is just letting more and more stars go. You guys remember when the Cruiserweight Classic was around in 2016 and these guys were just shining every single week? And then the 205 Live division got started and then it kind of went downhill from there? Yeah, I'm hoping that AEW can tap back into what WWE unlocked with the Cruiserweight Classic. But in the end, Dante Martin would continue on with this push of his by hitting his double jump moonsault on Davari for the win. And then afterwards, Martin was offered a contract to join Team Taz, which I thought was kind of interesting. And I'm thinking now we're probably going to have some rivalry between Leo Rush and Team Taz over who gets to have Dante Martin. And then in the main event, we had a Lumberjack match to hopefully close out this rivalry between Orange Cassidy and Matt Hardy. And in the end, the Lumberjacks started getting involved, Orange Cassidy just started dishing out orange punches to everybody, but amidst the confusion, the Blade hit Orange with a pair of brass knucks and Matt Hardy pinned him for the win. So again, I'm just hoping this flat out ends the rivalry here. And after the match, Hardy locked OC in the leech, and the Blade and the Bunny took out the rest of the best friends, and the Hardy family office celebrated to end the show. So overall, a pretty good go-home edition of Rampage, and we'll see what happens at full gear.